Okay, so now we're going to set the chains. So we've jacked it up in one corner. Um, the reason we've jacked it up in one corner um, is because what we want to do is kind of replicate this thing driving over a snowbank. So if you were to actually just lift this truck up on a hoist, all the axles would fall down. You'd set your chains at a lower level. And then when you went out and you crawl over a snowbank, that's going to send that track up. And then all of a sudden it's going to hit the fenders. So what we want to do, um, we've, we've jacked it up here with a floor jack. And then we put a jack stand underneath just for safety. Um, and then we've let the weight back down on it to shove this up as much as we can with what we've got here. And then we're going to cycle this track back and forth and set our chains uh, to a length that will stop it. I like to stop it, let's say, four to six inches from touching the nearest part of the body. So like my hand closed, that's four inches. Probably in this case, I'd stop at six with my thumb open. Uh, in the back, probably, probably going to stop at four inches. Now that's, that's all application specific. So, um, this is a use your own judgment, uh, situation. It's better to set the chains a little tighter and have a lesser range of motion in the beginning, uh, than it is to be looser and get out there and, you know, hit your fenders with the track. Um, so like you can always let your chains out once you get more comfortable with them. But the opposite of that is you don't want to set your chains. Um, I don't know if I can demonstrate it here, but I'll demonstrate it later, but you don't want to set your chains so tight that the track is hitting the chain just under normal driving because that'll put stress on everything and parts will begin to fail. So we're going to start, uh, by putting the bracket on the lower ball joint. Most vehicles use this bracket. Um, and then the chains connect into the bracket. There's the other chain, one chain on each end. And then the clevises go out to what I'll call the boomerang brackets. And you'll see it's got two holes in it. So those two holes are, are for fine adjustment. So if you look at this chain, when we get this chain up here, you're going to set it and you might set it at one link and it'll be too long. And then you'll go to the next link and it'll be too short. So what that allows you to do, if you pick between these two holes with this clevis, it'll let you kind of split a link. So you'll get, you know, in between the two links, half a link and, and hopefully find your perfect, uh, perfect length. And if all else fails, um, you can also take your chain and give it one twist. That'll shorten it incrementally, but this should in most situations solve any issue you have with adjustment. So the first thing we're going to do is take the nut off the bottom. We've already had it off once and removed the cotter pin. So it's going to come off easy. I'm just going to use my nut driver. Um, so I'll do that right now. And then here's that bracket because that bracket's a quarter inch thick, your, your castle nut, um, when it goes on, you're not going to be able to get the cotter pin back in. So I recommend that when you do reinstall this with the bracket, that you use some Loctite to keep that nut on. Uh, in this case, we're not going to put it on because this stuff, we're just doing this for demonstration. This stuff's all coming back off right away, but Anyway, so we'll put the bracket on. Um, you can see here we've got two holes, one, two, that's for the chains to hook into. And the center hole is what goes over the, the stem of the ball joint, okay? So we want to orient it so that we have one of these holes pointing to the front of the truck and one of these holes pointing to the back of the truck. So very simple. Put it on using the center hole. There, that's the front bracket installed. So the next thing we have to do is hook our chains up. So our chains have um, a quick link on one end and a clevis on the other. Okay, 
or shackle, whatever you want to call it. All the extra chain, this chain, we're not going to use the full length of it. So all the extra chain, we're going to put up on the quick link end because if we leave it hang on the clevis end, it'll get tangled up in our wheels. So, uh, yeah, I might as well just roll continuously and then I'll pull out whatever, whatever shots I want. Okay, so that's in. And this is in. Now we'll do the same thing over here. And hook that up back there. Okay, so now our chains are installed and our bracket is installed. Now we have to set the length of our chain. So as you can see, as the, the track articulates, um, the chain will get longer and shorter. And that's, that's what we use to uh, keep it from going up and connecting the body. So now we're gonna open this quick link. We're gonna work on the front one first, just because it's easier. And then take our chain and try to get an idea of what we think is uh, is a good link. So I'm going to go there and try and get it in by rocking it. And it might be we might be too short. Okay, so. That's actually not too bad, but it is, it is a bit short. That's about eight inches from, from touching the body. So what we're going to do now is we're going to try and get half a link and see what happens by moving from the top hole to the second hole, which is right there. And now that didn't make a whole lot of difference. So we're about seven inches. So that gave us about an inch. But I'm gonna try and give it just a little bit more room. So I'm going back to the original hole. Actually, before I do that, I'm gonna take it off of here and then go to the next link in the chain, which is right here. I'll put this back in and then I'll put this on here. So that's that. And now we're getting pretty close here. So that's that's four inches there, I would say. Maybe five inches. I think I'm happy with that because if I try to go with with this hole here, oh it might be might be too loose. Actually what I'm gonna do is put one twist in the chain. So we're gonna go, I guess, half a turn. So I'll have to take my clevis out, put it through from the other side, and do half a turn in the chain. And I think I'm happy with that. So, Tighten up the quick link, tighten up the clevis, and then we'll move and do the back one. The next thing is, so we've got the front limit set, as you can see, right? Lots of room here, but we're touching back here. So we're gonna shorten the rear chain until we get at least my fist worth of room. So, 
do that up here. And take that out. See which link we think will be the magic one. Uh, this one might be the one. And we'll try to get it in there. Okay, that's in. And it's a little bit, a little bit too long, I think. We're about three inches. That's a little bit too close because even though we've got this jacked up in the corner, this is probably not compressed as much as, you know, its maximum allowable range of travel is. So, so part of this distance that we're, we're putting in here is kind of our safety margin. Um, so what we're going to do is pull that back. We're going to try and go one more link. And then I'm going to pull this clevis out and I'm going to do a half link by going to the next hole. So I put that in there and then I'm going to the second hole in the boomerang bracket. And, and that's right where we want it right there. So that's my fist. That's about four inches. Again, so it's, it's better to be, you know, safe than sorry. So I like to be a little bit conservative in the beginning. And then as you get more comfortable with uh, how these things work, then you can let them out a little longer. The longer they are, the more articulation the track has, the better able it is to conform to the snow. Um, but that's basically it. So zip ties. This little clevis right here um, is notorious for working loose. There's really nothing holding it in there other than your ability to tighten it. And from, you know, repeatedly doing that, they are known to work loose. So what I recommend doing is take a zip tie, put it through the eye, and then put it through the clevis, and then pull your zip tie, and then you, your pin can't come loose, you won't lose your pin. The next thing you can do is take your extra chain, which I've got right here, take a zip tie again, and tie it back into itself. Um, that's just going to keep the chain from hanging down in the wheels and whatnot. Once you get this set to where you actually want it, um, you can cut the extra chain off. Um, but for now, it's a good idea to leave all the extra chain until you're actually happy with where it is. And then now that you've got this set, it's, it's a really good idea to uh, probably take photos of your chains. And then the next time you go to put them on, you can actually look at your photo and count how many links you have, and which hole you were in. Um, that should just make it easier. It'll stop you from having to jack it up each time and do this process, right? You should be able to just put the tracks on, put your chains on, and go. So that's basically it for the front end. So next we'll do the back end. Um, now that you know how to set the chain, that process will be replicated in the back. Um, pretty much the only thing we're going to show you on the back is how to install the bracket for the leaf springs in the back. So we'll move to that uh, next.